I am a technically minded racing game content creator and I've managed to get my hands on a Steam Deck. I'm really excited about this one. Um, I bought it with my money. This is a 256 gig NVMe model. Uh, I've had this for around about five hours now and this video is going to feature uh, racing game focused thoughts on the Steam Deck. Uh, not really a full review. I'm going to kind of leave a full review to, to the real kind of tech YouTubers that could do it a lot more justice. Um, but I've certainly got a lot of thoughts over the last sort of five, six hours of usage. Um, and as I said, focusing on racing games. Let's get into it. So first of all, let's cover the externals then. And I have to say, first impressions are, it does feel a little bit cheap. Um, the plastics used are just like, I don't know, they sort of feel like, like those old durable phones. It's just not high-end plastic, not like the switches. Um, it's also quite big, as you can see, compared to the, to, to the size of the switch there. It, it's not that big, to be honest. It's, it, it does look big, but it doesn't kind of, when you hold it, it doesn't strike you as, oh my God, this is a huge thing I'm holding. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just not a premium quality. I mean, Listen to those buttons. I don't know if you can really hear them. But listen to those buttons. They're just not premium buttons. Not like the Switch's buttons, which you probably can't even hear because they're so damn, you know, well designed. The Switch is a, is a fantastic product hardware-wise. And yeah, first impressions of this thing aren't great in terms of just pure quality of the materials used. Uh, and I have to say, I think that's a Valve thing. Um, I, I feel like they're just, you know, they're not that experienced. They're, they're no Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, or like, you know, Samsung, Apple. They're just not really hardware people. They have made hardware products before, of course, uh, but they're not massive hardware people. So it's understandable that industrial design may be a little bit behind that of other companies. Um, obviously, with, with the two touchpads you've got either side and, and the joysticks being there, everything is within reach. Um, the actual ergonomics of the design are actually really solid. Um, it is really just the, the kind of cheap feel of it. And although it is a great price for what you're getting, um, it's still not a cheap device. Uh, I think it's about 400 pounds or so that I paid for this one. So not exactly cheap. I would like to see just some higher quality materials uh, and certainly some time and effort put into just making it feel a bit more premium. One other point about the externals is there's no kickstand, which is a little bit surprising. I mean, what would it have taken just to build in a little plastic kickstand, just, just, just like the Switch has got I mean, on the back of the Switch? This is the OLED model. Um, you have you have the, the flap there. I mean, how simple is that? It's not, it's not complicated and then it could just sit up just like that, it's as simple as that. This just doesn't do that. Um, I will say I do quite like that it goes completely flat on a surface, which is quite nice. So if you are over it, looking down at it, um, it's really, really stable when it's flat. It's, it's nice and uh, sturdy. Um, but yeah, just no way to kind of prop it up, which is a little bit of a weird omission. That's that's the one key thing, other than the general kind of build quality that I'd like to have seen on the outside of the device. Moving on to the internal hardware then, and I have to say, this is an incredibly capable device. Um, you know, I, I have used a Switch. I will say I'm not a huge Nintendo kind of guy, um, but this is a completely different ball game. The form factor is pretty similar to the Switch, um, but the internals of this thing are are absolutely insane. I've been thoroughly impressed. I'll go into a bit more detail when we move on to the to the more software kind of things. Uh, it, it's a solid screen. It's not bad. It's nothing special. It's nothing insanely uh, kind of kind of well done or anything like that. Um, it's a solid screen. It's reasonably sized. Um, I, I think certain games you would want a bit of a bigger screen, if I'm being honest with you, but it is what it is. You couldn't put much of a bigger screen in this device, although you probably could have reduced the bezels a little bit. The brightness seems solid. Um, the colors seem solid. The response time is 60 hertz only, 1280 by 800 resolution, which, to be honest, is actually fine for this size, screen size. I mean, yeah, sure. Give me a 1080p screen, you know, and then, and then it'll be much better. But then, of course, you're then struggling for FPS. So um, with the performance that it's had, honestly, I'm happy with the screen. I think they got the right res about right for the for the uh, the internal capabilities of it. On to the battery life then. And so far, I've been really impressed with the battery life, actually. Um, I'll, I'll go through how long each racing game that I've tried uh, last would last with the Steam Deck. But uh, for the most part, you'll get at least two hours out of almost every game unless you're literally chugging along at 20 fps and maxing it out max brightness all that other stuff then you might go down a little bit but generally you'll get at least two hours out of out of any game i mean i'm talking like f1 or uh a set acc anything like that you get two hours of gameplay on on a pretty damn new high-end console level game um really impressive you can get up to sort of three hours on certain games any longer you're going to be looking at very very simplistic games 
Um, I was going to say something like Civilization, but actually Civilization is quite demanding these days. But, you know, you, you more simple games you're going to get more. But realistically, two to three hours of use, which actually is fine. As said at the start, I've got the 256 gig internal uh, NVMe SSD on this model. I wanted to get make sure I had a, a NVMe SSD because I knew it would be nice and quick, especially with the modern consoles that, of course, have got the NVMe SS SSDs built in. I don't want to be lagging behind them and having a horribly low, uh, slow load times. Also, games are going to become more and more optimized to, to make use of the uh, new gen SSDs. Um, obviously, that is, I, I kind of went for the middle one. They do do a 512 gig, to be honest. It's already full inside and I've already got an SD card. Uh, the SD card slot is on the bottom just there. Um, and it works off the SD card. It is a bit slow. I'm using a Nintendo uh, micro SD, which is a 256 gig one that came with my Switch. Um, and it works. You can run games straight off the micro SD card or you could transfer between them. But it is a little bit sluggish. It's faster than an old mechanical hard drive, so you're not going to suffer excessively badly, but certain games that are optimised more towards having an SSD, you are going to start to struggle. You'll see longer load times in pretty much every game you play, um, but some games that's not really a big issue. Something like Rocket League, it doesn't really matter. Um, something like perhaps GTA that, that live loads as you go along, you might start to struggle a little bit. Although the older games, something like GTA, is designed to work with the old consoles, which did have mechanical hard drives. So, in terms of into, into our drive, definitely would recommend getting the 512 gig one. F1 is like, I think it's like 80 gigabytes alone. So modern games will be, you know, you can really see two modern games on a 256 gig. Even with the SD card slot, definitely get the bigger one. But for the most part, the SSD has been impressive. Um, SD card slot does its job, but I still want faster SD cards really, but alas. On to the speakers then, and I've got to say, the speakers are solid, but they don't blow me away. I mean, they do their job. Um, it kind of gives you a bit of left to right, but not too much. Um, you could hear the game clear enough, but they don't blow you away. There's nothing special about them. They're okay. Um, it has also got a 3.5mm uh, headphone jack on the top, or you could plug in a USB-C headphone or Bluetooth headphones. Um, I will say I did try Bluetooth headphones, and there was a bit of delay, but that could be my own Bluetooth headphones. Uh, it probably is my own Bluetooth headphones, to be honest. If you had a gaming spec Bluetooth headset, uh, I'm sure the response times would be would be next to nothing. And finally, on the internals then, the system fan. I will say there is some fan noise. You can hear it. It's not like it's not audible, but it's not loud. Um, I'd say I've certainly had gamey laptops that are louder than this thing before. Um, you, there's no worries about using it on a train or anything like that. No one's going to look at you and think, oh, can you turn that fan down? What's that noise? Um, it makes a noise. It's audible. Um, but even without headphones on, it's still alright to be honest, it's just a kind of a background hum that you get. Um, for the most part, the fan noise is, is not really an issue. I'm not going to go into any more detail than that on the internal benchmarks. Um, obviously, if you wanted to get you know more info on the thermals or the benchmarks or anything like that, um, there's plenty of other reviews and YouTubers and stuff out there that will be giving you that kind of information. Moving on then to the operating system on this thing. And I tell you what, this thing handles almost anything that you can throw at it. This is genuinely a lot more like a mini PC, a mini handheld gaming PC than, than I expected. I mean, something like the Switch, you know, first party, it's quite locked down. There's only certain things you can do. There's only certain things you can plug into it. There's only certain things it's compatible with. And it's the same with the consoles and all that kind of thing. But this, pretty much everything I've just thrown at it has just worked. Um, it's got Bluetooth inbuilt. That's not a surprise, but I connected a PS5 controller to it. Just worked immediately. Um, I've connected some Bluetooth headphones to it. Again, just worked. Switched to, 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 to play through them. Just worked immediately. Um, I've connected to the USB-C port on top. Uh, I connected an Xbox controller. That just worked perfectly. I will say, for some reason, the Xbox Series controller didn't connect wirelessly uh, to it for, for via Bluetooth, for whatever reason. Um, I connected a USB-C uh, headphone to it. Again, just worked perfectly. I connected a USB-C to HDMI cable to it just work perfectly. In fact, even better than just work perfectly, what it did when I connected it to my TV is a 4K uh, LG OLED TV. Um, what it actually does is it makes the OS interface 4K. So for example, this side menu here, you can see you, you have to kind of scroll down to get more things. But when, when you connect it to a TV, it just shows you the whole menu. The actual, the actual interface comes up in 4K. It does still render the games at the internal 1280 by 800 resolution, but that's for the best because obviously the hardware can only do so much. It's never going to be able to render uh, a game at 4K. Um, but again, it just works. You just plug it in, it just works. I tried it with my ultra wide gaming monitor. Just worked in ultra wide. It didn't limit it to 16 to 9. It didn't do any of the things that even like the PS5 does uh, or, or the Xbox consoles do. It just worked in ultra wide. Obviously, again, the games were 16 to 9 because it, it limits the, the, the rendering resolution uh, to, to that regardless of what you have plugged into. But the actual operating system just worked on, on anything. I'm unbelievably impressed with what I've done with the operating system on this thing. It's not without its flaws. I would say it matches Steam 
quite well in that the functionality of this thing is for the most part amazing um they really have that they've kind of started with such a broad base again we want to make it like a pc you want to make it work with anything which is incredibly difficult and they've done a really good job um you know for example one of the things they've done is is, is if you press and hold the steam key and then i think it's the well there's a list of the shortcuts but I think you press the button and you can get a cursor in any game you can just bring up a cursor which certain games of course might not work nicely with controllers so you can just do it like that you can do the same thing to press the escape key the tab key any key you might need to press in game so they thought of kind of everything to make sure it remains open and more like a pc than a locked down first party console um but also somehow for the most part just flawless it just works I i'm unbelievably impressed with the operating system on this thing on the controls then um, for the most part the internal controls work perfectly um with most games uh it uses steam input to kind of as a bit of a layer between the physical buttons and stuff uh and the game so it kind of tells it can sort of it's almost like emulate it can emulate almost like an xbox controller sort of like ds4 windows does on pc or you can switch that off so for example when i was using my my, my ps5 dualsense controller for the most part the, the, the dualsense controller isn't that well supported by games but games that will support it if you switch off steam input you'll just send the game the direct PS5 inputs, which if it understands that, can just work with it. Or you can leave on the Steam input uh, side, and that, which generally is a lot more compatible. So th they've done a really good job of making sure that, that you know, again, just like the Steam desktop interface, um, that, that, that any controls you connect to it do just work with it. And as this is a racing game themed uh, kind of look at the Steam Deck, wheels do kind of work with it. Um, I've got a Fanatec uh, GTDD Pro, uh, which is the PS5 compatible wheel, also works on PC. Um, and it, w it did work, but only as a controller. Um, the, the actual wheel rotation and stuff didn't work. Um, but amazingly, I was able to, to you know, navigate menus and that kind of thing. Um, so it, it, it was somehow supported, but not fully. I imagine they probably can make it work with the wheel without too many issues. Um, but to be honest, I mean, wh why would you want to? I, I don't see why you want a huge, great wheel with such a tiny screen. I know you can you can plug the screen in, in, you know, plug the device into a bigger screen and stuff, but I just can't ever really see a need for a portal device to, to be wheel supported. But if they wanted to, they definitely could make it happen. Onto a few of the smaller details of the OS. Quick resume is insanely fast. It comes on so quickly. Genuinely, in Rocket League, I went from the, the device being off into standby mode uh, and then on and playable within one second, which is absolutely insane. So if you want to train or something, you can just hit the button. It will just go off. Uh, you know, And then when you're ready to go, hit the button again and it comes on again. It's so insanely good at quick resume. On top of that, I love the compatibility information. All you have to do is you have to click into the game, game info, and it tells you exactly what is compatible what isn't compatible it doesn't do that for every game just yet steam are working on valve are working on uh bringing that functionality to pretty much every game in their library um for now they haven't tested every single game but they've tested a decent chunk of them probably they're probably working down the order of popularity so most of the games that you're likely to play will probably already be tested by the time you get your hands on this thing um and for the most part it's been pretty accurate i'll go through details on each individual game but i love that it's got the option to tell you right we've tested this game it works perfectly or we've tested this game these are the things that don't work great often it'll list out things like um text may be small or gamepad isn't fully supported sometimes you need to use an on-screen keyboard that kind of thing um which, which stops it being like perfectly works with with, with deck but actually um those things are so minor because for the most part you you know you're, you're you're actually playing you're not kind of messed about with keyboards so it, it's quite a minor one but i love that they've got this in there um and again we'll get into the full compatibility with the games that i've tested in a minute steam cloud is of course built into this thing as well and so far it's taken all of my save games straight over to this. I've not even had to think about it. I signed into my Steam device, of course, when I first got, got it. Um, and then the second I launch it, it's just where I left off on my PC. One of the drawbacks is if you just put it in standby mode, um, it won't actually uh, upload while it's in standby mode. So you would need to, I guess, quit the game in order for it to kind of sync. But to be honest, that, that's quite a minor thing. And it's exactly the same on, on the Steam desktop app, right? You have to quit the game for it to, for it to sync. So as long as you're aware of that, it's not a biggie. Um, but yeah, so it syncs to this and then back on the computer and, it, and it's immediately synced again. It's so, so good, the the, the, Steve, the, the Steam Cloud Save uh, option. I did also try Steam Link, which allows you to stream games directly from your computer with Steam installed straight to this. But actually the quality wasn't great. I tried, tried streaming the F1 game um, and the quality was so much worse than just running it locally. So I don't really see why I do that one thing I would like to see added would be the ability to uh, grab the game files directly from a PC on the same network rather than having to re-download it all at the same time um, I think that'd be quite a probably simple thing to them to, for them to do um, and just just save bandwidth 
are on the lines of this thing being basically a mini portable PC. Uh, there's so many tinkering options with it. Um, there's so many overlays you just don't get on consoles. It tells you the exact GPU usage, the temperatures, uh, the amount of power you're consuming, uh, of course, the FPS as well. Uh, I love that all that information is there because, as I said, this is a mini PC. I think this is designed to entice PC gamers over to portable and I think that sort of thing is actually really important PC gamers love that kind of thing and although you know you really just want to play a game you don't want to just stare at graphs of how the FPS is getting on um, it's still handy to have that information because you know you want to try and optimize around that especially the power consumption that's the one that I found most useful to try and figure out well if I lower this to 30 FPS instead of 60 can I cope with that difference for a start and then if I can um, is it worth it in terms of power saving so that kind of thing is really useful to have I also love that it's got kind of custom options for doing things like frame rate limits. So you can choose yourself whether you want 60 FPS, 30 FPS, or 15. I don't see why anyone would use 15 unless it's a stop motion game. Um, but again, you can customize this thing out. If you want to hammer the battery and get you know 60 FPS or maybe 50 FPS or something if it's struggling, um, but only get an hour and a half of battery life, that's up to you. You could do that. If you think actually, you know, 30 FPS is fine for this particular game. You could do that and save a bit of battery. I love being able to do that. Um, you know, these sort, you know, obviously Switch is, you know, designed to work with the Switch. So every single game on here works perfectly with it. But I love the options that this thing provides. Speaking of options, this thing's even got a desktop mode. It's a Linux based kind of desktop operating system. Um, on here, you can install things like Spotify or Discord or basically anything that's got a Linux app. Um, and then you can also then use those in the kind of non desktop mode. So, Discord, for example, if you wanted to install that, I haven't actually tried it yet, but if you install that, you can then create a shortcut to it in the, the sort of game mode, the regular interface, uh, and then run it straight from there and have Discord running in the background, chatting to your mates on Discord. Switch, PlayStation, PlayStation actually might add it, but most other won't add Discord in the background. I love that they've given that an option. Bear in mind Steam's got their own voice chat as well. They've got, now nah, it's a, it's a PC. We want everyone to be able to use Discord or whatever they choose to do. Um, to be honest, I don't know if I'll use desktop mode too much, but I like it because it, it enables customization options, as I said, to be able to install things like Spotify and stuff. Um, but for the most part, obviously, you won't really use that. In fact, the more you use it, probably the worst job they've done of the main interface. Um, but I still love that it's there. There are, of course, a couple of drawbacks of this thing's operating system, but to be honest, it all revolves just around some polish. Uh, as far as I'm aware, I am one of the first paying consumers to get my hands on this thing. Um, and for the most part, I'm really impressed at the operating system they've made. Um, but yeah, just generally it needs some polish. Like, for example, the sliders at the side, um, you actually have to click into them to start using them, which isn't a very natural thing to do. It's such a minor thing. There's a lot of kind of usability things that could do with improvements. Um, I have also had a couple of crashes on it. Um, no major ones. Normally when I'm trying to launch a game that's not officially supported, or I'm trying to do something a bit weird and wonderful, I'm really trying to push it to the limits. For the most part, it's been really stable. Um, I'd say over the five hours, but bear in mind I've been trying to test it over those five hours. I've had two, maybe three crashes. Um, but just press and hold the power button for four seconds, uh, and then it just, just switches off and you can just reboot it, and then it's perfectly fine when it comes back. One other minor niggle is I'd love to see some display options. When I plugged it into my 4K TV, it made the interface 4K, which I actually really liked that was the default, but I may not want to do that. I mean, obviously this interface is designed to work on a 1280 by 800 screen. So suddenly if you give it a 4K display, it is all a bit too spread out. So I'd like the option to maybe run it at 1080p or something. Um, again, minor, minor niggles though, and uh, I think they will improve this really, really quickly because Steam are incredibly good software company. So I'm expecting probably over the next even three months for almost all my worries to be completely gone on just purely judging on what a good job they've done of this thing so far so moving on to the games then now i'm going to do this in order of whether steam has verified them as working or not um and the first game that i tested was actually rocket league um and this game i played quite a few hundred hours of in the past which is why it's one of my first go-tos and it does as it says on the tin work perfectly um it actually defaulted to max graphic settings or certainly high graphic settings but still ran perfectly smoothly at 60 fps there was no slowdowns no stutters no nothing it just ran really really nicely um it seemed to get around about three hours battery life on rocket league but yeah as advertised it, it worked perfectly the next verified game that i tried was actually circuit superstars a newish game that i played a little bit of in the past and i thought would be perfect for the scene deck and sure enough flawless uh it just it just works perfectly locked 60 fps no problem could go down to 30 on that game maybe um it gets around about three hours of getting usage at 60 fps and it's the sort of game you know where it's not too small that the interface actually works perfectly for this size screen so really impressed with that again another verified game it just works perfectly the final verified game that i've tested is dirt rally quite an oldish game now um but again 
exactly the same as the other games did just work perfectly uh it actually had it on medium settings because it's an oldish game now um, i was gonna try dirt rally 2 but they're about 90 gig each so i only wanted to download download one of the other one but if the old one works i'm sure the new one works as well probably just with slightly lower settings uh, and again locked 60 fps no problem around about three hours of battery life for that one as well moving on to what valve calls playable games then which is basically games that it's tested and they work but there's a sort of an asterisk over it. Um, often it's things like the controls don't quite work perfectly, uh, or you need an on-screen keyboard from time to time, or some text is a bit too small. Generally quite minor stuff, but it should work. Uh, the first game I played, unsurprisingly, was F1 2021 in this category. Um, and again, it just works. Um, as always, ran at the internal 1280 by 800 resolution, uh, put it on ultra low settings, but was locked to 60 FPS, no problem. And I was actually surprised I could play F1 2021 for two and a half hours on the battery for this one, uh, which really, really did surprise me. I definitely recommend stick sticking to 60 FPS on anything that's fast motion. Um, you know, the things that it had a, had a quib with, I think, were, were, were just controller issues, um, which was just such a minor thing that it just didn't matter. And I didn't have any issues whatsoever. To be honest, this game probably should have been in the verified category. The next game that I played was ACC, a very, very popular uh, GT racing car, set of course of Competizione. Um, and again, it was under the playable category. Uh, and again, it just worked for the most part. Um, the only thing I did have to change was the controllers. For some reason, the game defaulted to thinking I had a wheel not a controller, um, but as soon as I went to the settings, changed it to say, no, I've got a controller, it just worked perfectly. Uh, again, locked to 60 FPS, handled great, looked great. Um, ACC was a bit more demanding, so it'd probably only do about an hour and a half or so uh, with a full battery on ACC, um, at least at 60 FPS, but maybe you can get away with 30 on ACC. I guess it depends what view you use and how serious you are about your, you are about your racing. The next playable game that I played was actually SnowRunner. I've played a lot of this game. It's an ultra-realistic off-road simulator game. Um, and this one did need a little bit of tweaking. Um, if for some reason it defaulted to be running on medium settings, and I was struggling on sort of 20 FPS or so, but I turned it down to ultra-low settings, and I was on maybe 40 or 50 FPS for the most part, depending on the scene. Um, which was reasonable, but to be honest, that game, I could quite happily play on 30 FPS. It's not a fast-moving game, so 30 FPS was actually fine, um, and then after that, it had no issues, really. It worked perfectly. What I will say with SnowRunner, and I think will be the biggest, uh, I guess, issue of this form factor, at least, was that it's just not designed to be played on a screen of this size. So SnowRunner, for example, you really need to look at the ground ahead of you and whether it's going to be thick mud or not, but realistically, with this uh, display of this size and with this resolution, I couldn't really see that. Yes, it was playable. I wouldn't really want to play it on a screen of this size. That said, when I plugged it into my TV and got it up full screen, it worked incredibly well. It was just suddenly big enough. Um, the upscaling worked flawlessly. Um, and suddenly it was well worth doing, especially with a wireless controller. It then became just, just basically a desktop PC. Um, and I was really, really impressed with it in that form factor. But yeah, with the inbuilt screen, that game, yeah, not great, but does run. On to the unknown games then. This is unsurprisingly games that Valve has yet to test. So I thought I'd give a couple of those a go. First of all is Grid Legends. Probably just unknown because it is pretty new. Um, and un perhaps unsurprisingly being a brand new game, it does just work. Um, it defaulted to ultra low settings um, and it was locked to 60 FPS actually. The battery lasts around about two hours or so on Grid, Le Grid Legends. And I guess probably the newer the game within reason, unless it's too demanding, the more likely it is to work on this thing. I think the older games perhaps wouldn't be optimized for for um, a device of this kind of size and with the controls and that kind of thing. Um, especially as well, if it's a console game, I think it's a lot more likely to work. I think just a PC only game is gonna struggle a bit more. Um, but yeah, Grid Legends just seem to work perfectly. I think that could definitely go in the Verify category. The next game I tried was Beam NG. Now this is obviously an ultra realistic physics simulator where it's got super, super realistic crashes. Um, again, in the unknown category, I did have to tweak the graphic settings. It defaulted to sort of medium graphics and it was okay, but not great. This game also, when I first played it, ran off the SD card, but I, as soon as I transferred it to the internal SSD card, it then loaded properly. Previously, I was, it, it was just struggling to kind of um, load, dynamically load things as I was going along. When it was on the SSD card, that was fine. I put it on ultra low settings and actually I could have got away with medium settings, but ultra low just Means it runs a bit smoother um, and again perfectly fine 60 fps no problems at all i could definitely play bmng on this thing the last game that i played from the unknown category was euro truck sim 2 i put quite a few hours in on this game um, and actually i need to set up a new profile which i didn't have time to do um, but i managed to get to the menus and again it just seemed to be working perfectly to be honest um, if you want to you can use the cursor or you can use the the touch screen you can use anything you want to control it um, it is set up to work with a controller so it did work kind of well but it's not really optimized for use with a controller euro truck sim um, but again it seemed to run fine it didn't actually get in the truck uh, but as far as i could see uh it, euro truck sim works fine Onto the unsupported category now then, um, which is games that Valve has tested and 
doesn't work on this device. Now, interestingly, the first device that I tried in this category was Farming Simulator 22, which did work. Now, I can see why that they've put it in this category because the stuttering was terrible. Um, it was, it seemed smoothish, but it would just sort of stop, start, stop, start. Didn't seem to be running very well. Um, that said, when I moved it to my internal SSD and then lowered the graphic settings, it seemed to work a lot nicer. But I will say the graphic settings need to be need to be on the absolute minimum, which meant the draw distances were, frankly, barely playable in a farming sim. You could barely see your crops. Um, so I could see why it's not been put in any other category other than just straight unsupported. But it did work. So that's interesting. I'm surprised that a game that actually works, they put it in the supported category. But that just shows if you're going to get stuttery, it's just going to run really badly. Even if it does run, Valve will put a game in the unsupported category. So perhaps if there's a game you desperately want to play that's in the unsupported category, it may still work. The next game I tried from the unsupported category uh, was a set of course. And unfortunately, that just didn't work. Um, it wouldn't even launch. Um, it's just a complete no-go. It's a fairly oldish game now. Um, and obviously it has got its own launcher, which is perhaps why, um, but just, just, just straight wouldn't launch. So nothing wrong could do on that one. A set of Corsa does not work on the Steam Deck for now. The last game I tried from the unsupported category was F1 Race Stars. I've actually played this game quite a bit in the past. I do quite enjoy it, but it is quite an old game. I think it came out in 2012 or something like that. Um, and again, just, just wouldn't launch. Just straight up, just refused to launch. Just too old. I mean, a 10-year-old game, I guess that makes sense. But no, unfortunately, no chance for F1 Race Stars. So that's all the games that I've tried specifically for the Steam Deck. But I will say I was mostly very, very impressed. Um, almost all of those games ran with Proton, they call it, which is basically a Windows compatibility layer because this is a Linux system. System. Um, most games don't really have a Linux version, unfortunately. Um, and I was really impressed. It just mostly, they all just seem to just work. I mean, yeah, there's a few examples that just don't work, but generally it's the older games um, that perhaps ran, I don't know, older version of DirectX or something, I'm not too sure. Um, but for the most part, all the new games that I tested just seem to work, which is actually really impressive. Um, so, you know, I think that was probably my biggest concern and a lot of people's biggest concern about this thing was, yeah, but how many games are going to work, which games are going to work. And so far, at least, I mean, they're obviously still working on compatibility, and I'm sure they'll improve it in the, in the future. But so far, really, really impressive. And honestly, unless you've got a very specific game that's very old that you want to run, maybe you'll struggle. If you just like to play the, the relatively mainstream, you know, I do use the term relatively, it doesn't have to be that mainstream, and newish game the last five or six years, which I think, let's be honest, is 90% of people, um, you should be able to run fine on the Steam Deck. It's really impressive in terms of compatibility. In conclusion then, I absolutely love this thing. I am so impressed. Um, I wasn't sure how good it was going to be, whether it was going to be compatible with any games, or whether it would run very well, or whether the battery life would be any good, whether the form factor would be any good. Um, you know, notwithstanding the things that I've mentioned that, that aren't the best, like the build quality, um, it is, I'm still insanely impressed. I cannot believe what they've managed to do with this form factor, and I cannot believe that I'm now holding a device that will run almost any game that I would play on PC um, and I can just take it with me wherever I go or if I'm going to a mate's house I don't need to bring a gaming laptop or my PC or anything like that just bring this thing with a H with the USB-C to HDMI cable and a couple of wireless controllers and you can just play with your mates you know something simple like Jackbox I haven't actually tried Jackbox but I assume that'll work it's in the verify category it will work um, something like that something like a split screen F1 game It'll all just work. Okay, split screen you probably wouldn't want to play just because the resolution is going to be a little bit too low. Um, but for the most part, I am thoroughly, thoroughly impressed with this thing. Honestly, I'm already excited for Steam Deck 2. I know that's very, very premature. But I'm hoping that this thing is a roaring success and they poach somebody like Nintendo's uh, chief industrial designer and give it a beautiful case that's just really well built that could do justice to the internals plus of course fast forward a couple of years allowed even better internals that can perhaps even run at 1080p with a 1080p screen um i think it'll be amazing i'm still really impressed with this thing though do not take anything away from it this thing I i'm going to play it a lot i'm going to use it a lot it is absolutely amazing i will say it's aimed at pc gamers i think um if you're a diehard Nintendo fan and you're thinking, well, you know, is this going to be just a newer, better version of Nintendo Switch? No. Um, sometimes games do need a bit of tweaking, but PC gamers are completely used to that. If you're a regular PC gamer um, and you're used to every time you launch a game, 
straight into settings, right? What res am I running at? What graphics setting am I running at? Don't get me wrong, you don't have to be a, a nerd. You don't have to you don't have to know everything ins and outs and do benchmarking, that kind of thing. Um, but just as long as you're, you know, used to and comfortable, just go into the graphics settings, just making sure they seem to be set about right. And if the game's perhaps not running right, just turn it down a couple of clips. It's very, very simple, but still slightly more complex than certainly what the Switch would run and even what the the, the new the new consoles run. If you're comfortable doing that and you want to do that, you will love this thing. This is basically a portable gaming computer. Um, now, I realize gaming PC, gaming laptops already exist, but I mean, look how much smaller this thing is. You don't really want to use your gaming laptop on the tube or on a train or it just doesn't really work. Um, this thing, though, easily, you easily can do. The battery life is impressive. If you're a PC gamer and you want to play games on the move, I could not recommend this thing more for you. Anyway, guys, that rounds up my thoughts on the Steam Deck. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it informative. Do drop a comment down below if you've got any further questions. I'll try and answer as many as I can. Don't forget to drop a sub as well if you want to see uh, some more videos, perhaps some more in-depth on certain games or anything like that. Anyway, guys, catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.